welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. I feel like this is long overdue, this video, since moving into this property two years ago now. We have done quite the bit. So what I wanted to do in today's video is bring you up to speed with things, especially if we've got any new viewers here to um, basically show you guys the renovation story, where we're at today. I'll include overlays of where we have come from so you can see the difference. And yeah, we're so close. We're on the finishing stretch now to getting our ground floor, our final floor renovated. And then summer is pretty much project outside. So outdoor kitchen, landscaping garden, all of that kind of stuff. That's kind of what today's video is gonna be all about. Before I do get into today's video, I do very kindly have a sponsor and it is a brand new brand that I have never shopped before it is new to me and I wanted to share with you some key fashion staple pieces that I have discovered from Estia. They have very kindly partnered with me to be able to give you guys a discount code if you wanted to check out the website and see if there is anything on there that you like yourself. I actually have two codes. I have Freya15 for 15% off site wide or if you spend over a certain amount you can get 20% off using the code Freya20. I will leave all the information in the description box below along with the link to their website. Yeah, I've picked out six key pieces that I am loving and I wanted to inject into my wardrobe for spring, summer. I'm definitely gonna say spring actually because there are a couple of things that are suitable even for the cold weather. So even going into autumn or I would say like right now, just before we hit that peak of the spring sunshine, they have lots of items on their website which are suited to autumn, winter. I said that in terms of the style of the items on the website it's very unique eclectic it's quite monochrome which we all know I love this style and the cut of the pieces are a little bit different so yeah well worth checking out if you want to maybe try something new first item I'm going to share with you is a black dress um black in spring summer I think is underrated I quite like it unless if it's really hot then it's just a no-go for me and it's too hot but I like this one because it does have a higher collar if you wanted to do it all the way up and it also had, has the longer sleeves it also is I would say like a medaxi length so I got this one in a medium and it does have little pulls on the waist that you can really cinch that waist in I guess you could wear it the reverse you could wear the buttons down the back that's probably how they style it actually. Buttons down the back, all buttons down the front if you wanted to like have it as an open collar. So you've got like two dresses in one here. The second item is very much, I would say, a spring capsule wardrobe staple, good for mixing and matching and layering up. Quite often I like to keep a cozy jumper like this in just a nice neutral shade like this beige oatmeal color. I like to keep out just to have as an extra layer. So whether or not it be t-shirt, blazer, jeans, and the weather is fine for that, but you're not quite sure if the weather's gonna take a turn for the worse, then to grab a jumper like this and have it thrown over your blazer, like over your shoulders, just again, as that little added layer of warmth, or just on its own paired with maybe like a satin midi skirt with some nice sandals or even like, um, kind of pump style trainers is not only good for spring but also for autumn and winter as well this one i did go for a size larger and just for reference if you were wondering i typically am a uk size 10 or medium in clothes and i'm about five foot five so there you go um okay next up i'll stick with the jumpers and show you the other one that i picked up and this one probably is verging on being better suited for autumn and winter but again like i said we never know we do have those cooler days in spring summer i mean when i woke up this morning check the weather for the dog walk it said five degrees so it is still a little bit cold um but yeah this one i got in a size medium and it's kind of like a roll neck this is the coziest softest fabric i possibly own it is so soft and it's kind of like a fuzzy material texture if you can see that this color i love and I think, again, would work really well with some cream kind of colored jeans, high-waisted jeans. And also I don't own any jumpers in this color. So now I'm glad I do. This kind of earthy moss green is um, gorgeous. A bit more spring appropriate, this one. And it is just a shirt. It's kind of like a cheesecloth-y, super soft again, um, relaxed fit shirt. But again, this is what I mean by Esther in that their website has a piece that are like a, of a unique shape and design. It's not just a box standard cheesecloth white shirt. It has this kind of like crossover drape style here, which just adds a little 
like kind of detail, bit of a slit there. But I think with high-waisted jeans, it just adds something a bit extra other than just a box standard white shirt. In a medium, I got this shirt and yeah. So speaking of as it gets warmer, I did also get this shirt dress, which is a crossover wrap style dress with the short sleeves, kind of like a slight puff sleeve detail here. A dress that you could definitely dress up or dress down. I personally dress quite casually. So again, I would pair this with like my little pump trainers. I just really like a wrap dress. I feel like a wrap dress, well, it's like common knowledge, isn't it? Wrap dress suits every style, whether you're bigger on top, bigger on the bottom. Sorry if the angles just changed there. I just had to uh, delete some memory. Clearly been talking for too long. But anyway, that is the next dress that I picked up. Last but not least, I got this kind of lightweight trench. This one again in a medium. And this is uh, trench style, as you can tell in this kind of like taupe mushroom gray color. It's of a very light kind of sheer soft texture that I actually think would look really nice as a kind of dressier trench, maybe in an evening. Again, if you just want that extra layer over like a nice dress that you've got on. Of those six, let me know which is your favorite. And if you do, of course, pick anything up, make sure to use the discount codes that I have got. Make sure to take advantage, happy shopping. And without further ado, let's get into the updated house tour. So I'm gonna try and put cutaways of how it used to look. Cause it's been a while since we first started this renovation project and obviously a lot's changed over the last couple of years. So, well, 18 months or so. So initially here in this front porch way, um, we do have plans to replace this front door currently there and set it back to here as one big rectangular door with like a light box at the top. Now, if you remember, there did used to be a door here uh, when we first moved in. It did get smashed, the glass got smashed because we did think about keeping it, but it was in quite poor condition. And with that being our front door, we need it to be secure. Yeah, we are going to be having a new front door put in and this is gonna be removed and we're gonna have this all repainted, retiled and everything so that it's an external porch. So as soon as that front door's fitted, you then will walk in to the hallway. Now I've just popped down some of this stuff. It's just from B&Q, it's the good home. I know there's one for carpet, which we used to have upstairs, but I've taken that off now. Um, but this one is for hard floor. So it's just to have like a protection along that main run and then we've got ply boards in there. This is what the hallway is looking like. We have plans for the door to open this way so that on this wall we have the light switches and I might just have a little console here or something but other than that not too much else and then you walk into here now the carpet on this stairs was just a temporary cheap in fact they included it free when they did all of our carpets upstairs so I don't even know what type of carpet that is but it was like I say just a free one that they put down and we have this entire we have a roll of carpet. You can see that top step is the different color. That's the carpet we have. So we do have one roll of carpet left and it was from Cormar Carpets and it is in the shade Leadbury Linen, which is in our eaves, the enough for here. However, they've since discontinued it, which is a shame because we were gonna have the same carpet put on the staircase down into the basement, but we can't do that. So we're gonna probably get a similar one from Cormar. Good job we did get that spare because otherwise it wouldn't have matched with that top step. Staircase, we're gonna have that repainted as well. We're thinking black for potentially the handrails but white spindles or maybe all black not sure yet but that's how that's looking so in terms of this first room this used to be their kind of like front living room it was very floral like dark floral i can't even remember what the wall color was obviously you'll see on screen now but i think it was pretty floral was it green and pink i can't remember uh, but anyway we have um, since when we first moved in, we just blasted the walls white. Obviously up close, you could see all the details, the wallpaper and everything, but from afar, from a distance, blur your eyes and it was all just white. And now we have since plastered, we have put in a fireplace, which is all covered up and protected with a limestone hearth chamber and surround. So nice and simple and neutral. And then we're gonna probably paint it black in here, keep it nice and cozy, have a nice sofa put here somewhere an armchair maybe in that 
window and imagine the Christmas tree in that bay window. I just can't wait for that day. Um, but for now, this is how it's looking. The flooring that we've gone for, we have laid it in herringbone style with a single border. And this is from the brand Sierra. It's an LVT, luxury vinyl tile, glue down. And it is in the shade Reclaimed Oak. So if you're wanting a shade similar to this, we didn't want gray, but we also didn't want anything too warm tone. So I think this is a really nice finish. If I just switch on the lights, you might be able to see that it warms it up as well when you put the lights on. The sockets and switches we've gone for, obviously the plate's not been fitted yet, but it's an antique brass to match upstairs. And these are from Corsten. And then we've decided to keep this space open. So again, if you remember when we first moved in, there were actually double doors here into what was the kitchen space, which was a very generously sized kitchen, if I'm being completely honest with you. It was at least double the size of the kitchen we'd moved from from the previous house so there was plenty of storage and plenty of space but it was just very much run down we were moving the kitchen to the other side of the house and no extension anyway so this space we've decided to just keep it nice and open so that it's kind of an extension of the living room. Initially, we had plans to maybe pop a dining table in here, which we may still do, but use it more as like a slight kind of like office space. And if ever we did want to host dining in here, um, then we can do. However, I think the likelihood is when I take you through to the kitchen extension, you will see that we're probably most likely gonna use that space through there as a dining as well. But anyway, the plans on here is a floor to ceiling, wall to wall bookshelf, which we've got some wall lights ready to kind of set um, have hung from the bookcase and then we've also got this side which we've got a single light going up there which again might be like a picture light and maybe have a nice big piece of artwork here this is the manifold to all of our underfloor heating these are where the pipes run throughout the entire ground floor it's the only floor that we've decided to go for underfloor heating down in the basement and the top two floors are both um, they all have radiators this space used to be the pantry for the kitchen which had a door into it and then the back door to outside there are a couple of steps down as you go outside let me see if I can show you out this window yeah there you go you can see out there a couple of steps down to the garden space now because we've switched around this room and it's no longer a kitchen pantry I think the likelihood is is this just gonna be a storage room we'll probably never use this back door but it was far cheaper rather than to block up this or just put in a window to just have a door because it's not only just replacing that, it would also be um, having to sort out this staircase, remove it, and it was just far more hassle than it's worth. So we just decided to keep that and just replace it with like a UPVC door that again, we'll probably never use. Anyway, the plasterers are coming back in a few days to plaster this space, at which point then painters and decorators will come in and also the joiner to fit the skirting boards and architraves and to also hang the doors and the door casing. So if I take you through to this space through here, we have a um, narrower corridor leading into what was a uh, downstairs loo, which is still going to be a downstairs loo. Again, for ease, it was just easier to rather than structurally change this space to keep it as it was. And we are going to have a toilet backed up against that wall so in that cupboard that I just showed you that will never get used it'll just be boxed in throughout there going to the external waste on the outside so again we're not too precious about the fact that you'll be able to see the pipe we'll just kind of box it in and do like a little seat box in that room We've got a vanity going there which is like a very traditional sink set on a chrome kind of footing like washstand style that you can throw a little hand towel over and it's kind of more of the period type property feature for a downstairs loo we're also going to have a uh, wall lights and a pendant light in here we then have a space which was um, a single room of which you can see on the ceiling here the original room was this section here all this plastered ceiling here and they used this as a second living room more cozy living room there was a fireplace but we have decided to extend this space um, backwards and also to the side pretty much 
doubled we've pretty much doubled this space so we have decided to move the kitchen living space to the back of the house whereby it leads on to the garden it's a lot quieter and i just feel like we're going to be living in this space so so much maybe some kind of sofa l shape or armchair sofa coffee table and we're going to have like a kind of media wall here we've had the shelves done already we're going to have boxed in cupboards here as well we're also going to have sonos speakers popped up here i believe this is the space this side of the beam essentially that i thought would be quite nice to have a dining table but this is the kitchen that we've gone for it's a diy kitchens we had a little bit of issues it was more so on the customer service side and the user friendly ability in terms of putting in your order maybe we'll go into it one day if you are interested but in terms of the actual kitchen itself and the quality really really happy with it so we decided to go for the helmsley range and we've we've ordered their brass um hardware which actually i was thinking about just ordering my own brass hardware like a nicer expensive one but i really like that one it's kind of like rustic and antique i just didn't want it yellowy and uh, it's not so i'm really happy and would definitely recommend their hardware if you are wanting antique brass that isn't yellowy and yeah we've got the double belfast sink in we've also got the you might be able to see in that color cupboard there the cooker tap which goes on there it's like a hot tap as well so you've got instant boiling water cannot wait for that to be fit we've gone for a dishwasher either side of the sink as well double oven and a microwave that's the microwave up there that also acts as an oven so maybe this was a bit overboard going for all of these but we decided to just get the double oven anyway and then yeah so diy kitchens in terms of the island We've gone for, they do bespoke colours, which again is an, a feature that I really liked. I think it was only about an extra £100 or something, 50 to £100 pounds per like unit or whatever to be able to have your bespoke colour. So this is just the standard white. And then this one, we decided to go for the little green paint in the shade Invisible Green. And it's a really muddy, earthy kind of green, which I personally love. It's just very natural, like I say, muddy, earthy kind of tone. And yeah, we've had the, um, we've got the expanding cutlery drawer in there as well. I think I'm gonna go for another section in here of all the other utensils, but also do a little, a little spice organizer thing there because the hob is going to be going here. It's an induction hob with the extraction down the middle. So it kind of sucks in so that's where that's going to go in terms of the worktop we are um we've got the fitters coming out to measure up for the worktop this week so again in a couple of days and then this will be fit i think it's two weeks from the fitting date two to three weeks from the fitting date this is the one we've gone for it's from gemini worktops in calcutta silver superior totally inspired by an Instagram account I follow called, called Be True and Black. She has the most gorgeous period property ever. And her kitchen is like a dark green and she has this worktop as well. So I also loved the beveled edging that they do. No, it's not called beveled edging. Uh, I'll have to remind myself, but essentially rather than just a standard like squared off edging, it has like a slight groove to it. It's gorgeous. I just think it makes it look that little bit more expensive. So that's the worktop we're going for. It is going to run from this corner all the way down so that we can have a couple of bar stools popped under here, but it's also going to run out here as well. So again, we can have a couple more bar stools here. We're going to pop a plug socket in there. I did misorder the handles. That's why we've got a few missing for new handles that I've ordered free delivery. So they should be here soon. We've also added a couple of wall lights, which are going to go there. And then in here, we've got the fridge freezer to go there, which we still need to buy. And in here, we've got the pantry. And obviously I have nothing to really compare this space to because this didn't exist. We did have a side extension, which was kind of classed as a conservatory, which I'll pop a video or picture on, but it's a slightly different space. So we ripped that down and that essentially is half of what that space was basically and then we just extended the rest of it into this kitchen living so yeah this is how it is currently looking we have had to have this door taken off that's how much space we've lost so we just need to shave down the door essentially so that we can rehang that and put that back on there i mean i haven't tidied up but i'll just show you quickly 
I've got a full basement renovation tour actually. Just doing some home updates vlogs. That's our temporary fridge situation there, microwave. Um, so yeah, we've got this space in here as like a utility. I'm just drying some sheets and that leads to outside. So we always basically use this back door to come in post dog walk. Give Barney a rinse down in that shower. This is our temporary kitchen at the minute. So we've got like air fryer, toaster kettle, knives, but usually this is styled up more as a utility space. So I'm excited to have all of that worktop space back as soon as we move into the new kitchen. And then through here, we just have a storage room in here. Then we also have this corridor walkway with a downstairs bathroom. So if ever future owners or we decide that we want to use this room as a spare bedroom, a guest bedroom, then there is this bathroom in here as well that they can use. So yeah, just a very simple bathroom. This, we've been chilling in here, so it's very messy, but essentially is what we call the cinema room, but only really because there's massive bean bags. I think what we'll do in future is have this as a gym space and then be able to have like weight racks and stuff out there. All of this needs rendering outside and the roof painting and everything. But yeah, that's how it's looking currently. Now, if we go upstairs, I think we had for a continuation from downstairs, red carpet from memory. I think it was all red. Um, but yeah, this is how the corridor is currently looking. And then this was the only bathroom of the entire house initially when we first moved in. So we decided to keep it as the main bath, the only bathroom that has a bath. It's still quite snug, but essentially what we've done is we've kept the bath. Everything had to be kept in the same positioning. So the bath had to be here, the toilet had to be there. Um, and then we added the sink vanity there. But what we did is we went into the into the bedroom that is here to, to essentially create this big walk-in shower. And then also it allowed us on the other side of this in the bedroom to have an ensuite for that bedroom. Still a lot different to, I think it was blue carpet. Why anyone has carpet in a bathroom, I don't know. But it was blue carpet in here. And I'm pretty sure it was purple walls. So yes. Then this is one of the bedrooms which I use as my kind of like filming space. It was a pretty plain and simple bedroom this one. We did brighten it up by obviously doing the walls white. We added paneling on the back wall which if I turn around you will be able to see there. And that kind of just continues on the half paneling throughout the rest of the corridor. So then if we carry on through this corridor here, again, excuse the mess, I've not cleaned up for this video. I actually, I'm just doing a bedding wash day, so that's why the bed isn't made. Um, but this bedroom, this main bedroom, whilst we're doing the renovations, we've had Barney in here, um, but he will probably go back downstairs after they're done, maybe, we'll see. But yeah, again, with this space, we just had this wall panelled and the one behind me and just kept it fairly fresh and simple. We did add coving in this bedroom and ceiling light and wall light again just to keep with the kind of period features of this property. Wall colour I get asked quite a lot. It's from Lick Paint and it's in the shade Beige 01. It's kind of like a almost greeny beige. Really really soft and nice and warm for bedroom space. When you have a golden retriever there are always lint rollers <laughs> hanging about. Right, so again in this space, ignore the mess. I've just been doing a load of washing and also wardrobe organization. So I've got lots to take to the charity shop or sell on Depop, we'll see. But for now, this is our spare bedroom. Again, this was one of the bedrooms which was quite big, but we converted it to be able to have the shower, which is kind of against this wall in the main bath. And then like I said, this ensuite, which we have added to this bedroom. It is obviously open right now. Our plans with this in future will be just to add a like rail along here and have it as a sliding door because it was too narrow to be able to have a door open into it. So that's why there's no door in it at the minute. It's something that we need to add on in future. Again, very simple. The main um, bathroom tiles are the same as these ones as well. They're from Mandarin Stone and they are called uh, Casa Grande in Ivory. I believe they discontinued the shade Ivory unless they brought it back, I don't know. Uh, but it's very similar to Cavendish Cream and Cavendish Buff that they also do as well. We've got the cream one down in the basement. That bathroom down there was Cavendish Cream. Other than that, some Ikea drawers, bit of styling on top when it looks nice in this room. It is a lovely little room. We've got a little guest hamper for when people stay with 
neon pillow mist, some beauty sample bits, some spare eye masks whilst we've not got blinds up in here yet. Again, that's something that we need to add. We're just going to wait until downstairs is done and just put in one big order in one go because we need to get shutters as well. We got our shutters, by the way, which I'll show you through there in the bedroom. We just have shutters on the front of the house, but they're from a company called Jola Blinds, really good. So we're gonna get them back to fit the shutters in the downstairs front room as well. And when they do that, we might get them to add some fabric blinds. So you look at that crack again. Things like this happened when we were underpinning the basement and also adding in the steel to the extension. This one was actually from the basement though, the underpinning. So they all need to be filled in and uh, repainted over. So if you remember this staircase up to the top floor, it was, I think it was bright red floral, this one. So of course we went neutral. We've just got the same carpet throughout the entire upstairs and it's kind of like a hatched, uh, wool blend carpet that is a bit more heavy duty. Yes, it's not as cozy as I'd have liked to have a carpet, maybe in a different house, but I just feel for the period of this house, I feel like this carpet works a lot better. It's more practical. Um, and yeah, we're not too precious about Barney coming up on these. So again, we've had the paneling run up throughout these stairs and yet again, just the reality of it, guys. We've had little things like chips here and there that actually has come from that, that is annoying. Maybe we'll keep that there for them to kind of add it on, build it up with some filler, repaint over it. But yeah, lots of scuffs and marks, all needs repainting and resorting. This is very much a kind of like first coat job just to get in and get it done. Same with the staircase, this is all the original staircase. We wanted to keep it so it all needs properly sanding back. And again, painting black is our intention, but we will see with that. So if you remember from this top floor, we actually had a door into this room, which was um, like a fourth bedroom, and then a door into there, which was that space there, as a fifth bedroom. We opened it up and made it into one, and this is very much Tom's space, so again, excuse the mess, but this is just reality. But for in here, this was one space with a sloped roof, so we added this divider wall to be able to have an eaves storage. Switch on the light in there, and it goes quite far back. Might be able to see. So that's in there. And then we've also had an ensuite added. Again, this is just an open ensuite, and we're probably going to keep it open because of that sloped roof. It's the sort of space that if in future it needed to be a bedroom, then it's kind of like a bedroom space that it's kind of like a contained, you know, the whole floor would be whoever's staying here. So you know, the bathroom is kind of hidden. I don't love bathrooms without a door, but because of the sloped roof, it made it really awkward. And I just think actually it's fine. So yeah, we just had, I just put that back on. We just had a, oh, just seen Tom's put his little bathroom caddy up that I gave him. Um, yeah, these tiles are from Topps Tiles and they are, what are they called? Lampus, I think. I know the ones in the dog wash are called Lampus Cloud, which is the white color. This one, I can't remember the name of the color, but it's the green one, the dark forest green. So we had them hung vertical or laid vertical as well, just for that kind of like slight more modern look. And yeah, love them, especially with the brass hardware. We got all of our brass, um, brushed brass, shower heads and everything from a brand called Colebrook and we got it from Plum Base in Bramall. Then this is the other side of the room which essentially was the fifth bedroom. It was the princess bedroom before with pink and purple and yellow walls, princesses on the walls and it was one of the kids and grandkids uh, bedrooms that they had. So very much uh, a kid's room of which we obviously have painted it all white. We kept this beam exposed. We just need to sand it back and treat it. Again, added to the snagging list for jobs that I'm sure there'll be endless amounts of jobs to do with this house. But Tom has decided to put like a light up shelving area over there. He's also got his granddad's coffee table, um, which he needs to like put those prints somewhere. There's standing desk, he likes to work stood up. Um, I think we will restyle this room in future. Like I know he wants to get rid of this, but for now it's just practical and it works for a bit of shoe storage for him. And then on the other side of the room, he's just got some drawers, a little hat stand, coat stand, and then his kind of open wardrobe space that he decided to keep it nice and open. So for him, this space is very much an office, walk-in wardrobe, bathroom, his domain, which works for us because the fact that 
he can have his own space if he is working from home and we kind of like don't disturb each other it's just really nice for us each to have our own space so this is yeah his domain that I don't even need to don't even need to really get involved with in terms of cleaning it and organizing it it's his space to do with as he wishes so very real time very realistic updated house tour this isn't by any means any kind of finished result I will tidy for that, I promise. Uh, but for now, this is how the house is currently looking. I hope you feel a bit more up to speed on where we're at and where we've come from as well and reminded of our entire journey if you've been with us since the beginning or of course, seen where we've come if you are a new viewer. So yeah, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you, of course, once again to SDF for very kindly collaborating with me on today's video and giving me the discount codes for you to spend and use on their website. I'll leave a link to them down below in the description box. Thank you again to them for working with me. Thanks to you guys for watching. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I hope to see you all very, very soon in my next video. Bye guys.